Hey, I'm Alex. I'm one of the co-founders and CEO at Snorkel AI, and I am extremely privileged to be here today with um, Nertekin Savas, who is the head of enterprise data science at Capital One. Nertekin, great to be chatting with you today. Hello. Thank you. Thanks for having me. So uh, I'll start with with uh, you know um, uh, high level question about you individually, or you individually as you've intersected uh, enterprise data science at a at a you know major uh, U.S. enterprise. Can you share a little bit of your journey into the field of, of data science and machine learning and just kind of give us a little bit of the, the, the TLDR and how you ended up as head of uh, enterprise data science at, at Cap One? Sure. Happy to, Alex. My path to machine learning and Capital One is a bit non traditional, I would say. I am actually a trained civil engineer, which gave me a very strong math background, but I really didn't want to do that for a living. Early 2000s, when I graduated, business and finance were really hot topics. So I jumped into studying finance at the graduate level. A few years later, I received a second graduate degree in data science and predictive analytics. And after my graduate studies, I stumbled upon this field called marketing analytics at AOL, which was a very hot company at the time. And I quickly fell in love with analyzing customer data and patterns and solving customer problems with data and math, basically. My role at AOL led me to the Bay Area where I started working in the payments industry, specifically at Visa. And the amount of data and the possibilities in the payments industry was just astonishing to me. The first time I held a formal machine learning role in the title was when I was recruited by Amazon. I had a few really wonderful years over there leading ML and data science for Amazon payment products. And then I moved to the East Coast due to some family reasons. I joined Fidelity Investments in Boston, leading their AI center of excellence in the retail side of the organization. And after a few years there, Capital One knocked on my door right before the pandemic, as a matter of fact. And it was an opportunity I could not say no to, mostly due to the culture of the organization. It's focus on tech data, machine learning, it's focus on people, and it's mission to change banking for good. And as a result, I really wanted to work there. And that's what brought me here. That's an awesome trajectory. And and it's also, it highlights a lot of the, the kind of locuses of, of where there was data and analytics applied to that data, right? You know, marketing uh, data, marketing analytics, uh, again, before people were calling this AI or machine learning, Right, uh, that was one of the first places where you had actual big data and actual, you know, incentive to, you know, squeeze some insight out of it, right? And then payments, you know, is kind of you know one of the other uh, centers of where all this actually got kicked off. And then of course, you know, then going into to big tech, uh, uh, you know, I think a lot of us machine learning people like to think of things in terms of you know vectors and and uh, you know totally agnostic to the actual use case, but we forget that it was really some of these these use cases like marketing payments that drove this from, you know, counting in statistics to the, uh, the, 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 you know, the fancy, uh, uh, you know, machine learning AI uh, uh, fervor today, right? So yeah. it's pretty exciting that you got to trace multiple of those kind of, you know, hotspots where there were real use cases where some kind of data-driven analytics actually yielded huge value. That's exciting. Um, so now you're at Cap One. Can you can you talk? A little bit about uh, Cap One's approach to using data science and and you know ML um, in its decision making processes in in kind of if you're able to share any you know key use cases and kind of how that's evolved over the, the period of time you've been there. Sure, happy to Alex. At Capital One, we're really driven by our mission to change banking for good and help our customers succeed financially. And technology is central to how we do this and how we deliver value to our customers. And we knew this from early on that the future of banking really involves building great tech coupled with great risk management skills. And as a result of those great customer experiences delivered in real time through software, data, and platforms. And to achieve this, we knew we had to become great at building software. So we built a world-class in-house technology workforce of more than 12,000 people, most of which are engineers and data scientists. We also moved to the public cloud. We architected our applications, our data platforms, and embraced machine learning at scale. 
AI and ML are really central to how we build our products and services. And we leverage these things in a number of different ways. I'll give you a couple of examples. For example, we use AI and ML to better understand our customers' needs and behaviors, customize the user experience. We look out for their financial well-being. We help our customers become more financially empowered and we use AI and ML to help them better manage their spending. That's awesome. And if you think about some of the, you know, so, so I think the, 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 the success of those kinds of, of uh, applications of machine learning are quite visible. Um, if you think about some of the challenges that you had to overcome or that you're still working to overcome, right? Uh, this is, uh, you know, one of my favorite topics, what's the, what's the gap between, you know, academic, uh, you know, or data science blog post ML and real world uh, ML. Obviously we're, you know, at Snorkel very focused on the, on the data part. And I know you're, you're very uh, keen on that as well, that area as well in, in the work that you and your team have done. What, what, what are some of the top challenges you face? You mentioned things like, you know, real time, uh, like risk management. What are some of the big challenges you see just, you yeah. know, in actually getting something to production in, you know, a regulated setting where real people's finances are on the line. Yeah, definitely. So one of the biggest challenges that I see in this industry as a whole, not just in Capital One, is around making data that feed into models better. Most companies, you would see them talking about machine learning, but many are really struggling to modernize their data ecosystems. They are facing fundamental challenges, such as data stored all over the place. Data is hard to find, it's hard to access. Tech stacks are cobbled together through years of acquisitions and legacy data ecosystems really limit how data is managed. And at Capital One, we've been on a multi-year journey to transform our data ecosystem. We got to this point by following a few, few uh, key best practices around data quality and data governance. I'll talk about some of these. So number one, we are creating feedback and engagement mechanisms for our users and customers. This basically delivers us valuable, high quality data to help train our machine learning models. Second, we're standardizing our tools and processes and platforms. These help data scientists and engineers more easily find the data that they need, access data, process and transform that data, engineer features, and ultimately build, deploy, and monitor the models. Three, we're focusing on enterprise-wide high-quality data by building tools, not just for data producers, but also for data consumers. Four, we have uh, automated model monitoring and training processes. These ensure consistent performance, and they also enable continuous integration and continuous delivery of uh, models. And the last thing I'll say is that we have established well-managed processes like model governance, risk control, peer review, processes. These are just a few examples of how we're trying to get better at one of the hardest, yet most important ingredient of building great ML products, which is data, data platforms, and data governance. It's really key to get these components right. So, I mean, you're, you're, you can, you can, you can, uh, you already know that, that uh, um, you're preaching to the choir here with the, uh, you know, <laughs> I got my snorkel hat on, and, and obviously, you know, data is at the center of so much, and and I like that um, you know, a lot of what you seem to be emphasizing when you were giving that that awesome overview was yeah. that a lot of the modeling parts, even the monitoring parts, which you brought up, can you know can increasingly be automated in really kind of you know standardized best in practice ways. But a lot of the engineering and the pain points around the data at all stages of of uh, you know uh, labeling, collection, integration, et cetera, and and you know certainly that's something that we we see echoed a lot. It's awesome that you're. Uh, prioritizing that, right? Because there are still many places that treat that as outside of the purview of the AI teams, right? Someone else's problem to deal with, janitorial work. And uh, it's it's always heartening to see when uh, teams are actually, you know, AI teams are actually saying, no, this is this is the the heart of what we have to fix and build and do to get AI to to work. So that's that's awesome to awesome to hear. Um, one other aspect that you know we we've you know even on uh, on the academic side, uh, uh, focused on this a lot, um, uh, and, and there's a big big theme that we see come up a lot, this um, idea of, uh, you know, collaboration between the data science teams and what we often call the subject matter experts, the people who know how to deal with the data, to find it, to curate it, to select it, to label it, et cetera. 
How do you how do you think about that at uh, you know in your work? Yeah, collaboration across machine learning and data science teams, as well as other disciplines, like you mentioned, product design is really critical for us. We consider all of these job families as a single team, and their their main focus is on quality, collaboration, and reliability. And we apply a number of best practices to ensure this relationship continues smoothly. A couple of examples to these best practices would be starting from the intent of the ML initiative and the customer problem that we're trying to solve, aligning on that first, and then working backwards from that, including selecting the tech stack, identifying performance metrics, and et cetera. Second, it's really important to standardize points of connection and handshakes across teams. It really eases the coordination across distributed systems and teams, which we have at Capital One, and uh, ensuring that we are resilient to organizational shifts. Third, creating platforms with robust monitoring and alerting, which allows us to know who to who needs to get involved and, and when. And um, fourth, incentivizing the reuse of tools where possible, ensuring that those tools have outstanding documentation helps with the collaboration and help smooth that out. And last but not least, maybe the most important thing, creating solutions that the whole team can really take pride in building together. I think are key components in, in making that collaboration really effective and smooth. It's awesome. And, and it's, it's awesome to hear you highlight collaboration and some of these, you know, kind of tooling and, and, and uh, you know, project management or people management aspects. So up front, because uh, I did actually did a, a discussion Group with some some uh, you know people building uh, you know tools and 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 companies in the AI space and asked uh, you know uh, what's the thing that you were most surprised about in terms of gap between you know academic or or kind of you know uh, open source data science and actually trying to get things shipped in the real world and one of the most common answers was was just project and people management right just just that's that's where so many you know not that we don't have a fancy enough algorithm uh, uh, it's it's that uh, you know. The, the handshakes, as you said, the collaboration, the basic structure of the project, good old fashioned project management, it was just not mature and it's often very immature in, in, in AI. Um, uh, so it's, it's awesome again to hear that kind of emphasized up front. Switching, switching Taxol, can, can you discuss some of the ethical considerations that come with using machine learning and how, how you, know, you and your team and how Capital One navigates these challenges? Yeah, absolutely, Alex. As I said, we're guided by our mission to build and deploy AI and ML in a responsible, uh, well-managed way. Uh, and we believe everyone involved in the creation of machine learning has some level of responsibility. We operate with the innovative mindset of a top technology firm, but at the same time, we also operate at the scale uh, with the risk management capabilities and expertise of a leading bank. As such, we have a very strong framework and a set of best practices for model risk management, including specific model risk processes that get integrated into the model development lifecycle from beginning to end. We have our risk management controls uh, monitoring and the technology infrastructure that wraps around all of this. Basically, these enable us to scale machine learning in a responsible and, and ethical manner. Governance and model risk management are ongoing iterative processes. They're not a one and done task, a check the box exercise for us. It starts at the inception of the machine learning project and continue throughout the life cycle of the ML initiative. Final thing I'll say here is explainability, which is a pretty key term that we hear these days, it's a key component of ensuring responsible AI. And we're advancing research in this field, we're, we're investing in it, and we're staying on the forefront of transparency and interpretability in AI and ML. That's awesome. And, and these are all fields that are very, very interesting, especially these days with all of the, uh, the underlying shift in the types of models we're using and, you know, some of the, the more challenging or, or just different uh, ways to, to to probe them and, and interpret and explain them. Um, I'll just also note, and and you know, it, you can riff with me on this, or we can move on. But but at least I have a uh, you know a strong opinion that you know uh, so much of of uh, just to go back to an earlier theme we were talking about, so much of governance and risk management around, around models is is data governance and data risk management. Because if you think about a machine learning model, its job is to fit to a data set. Right. So if you want to, I mean, 
risk bias errors can come in at all stages of, of, a, of, a, of an AI powered application. Uh, but so much much of it obviously is determined by the data. And so I think that uh, you know a lot of a lot of I've seen you know this go less well when there are teams that, again, back to the the point we're making, they're not thinking about data you know front and center. And so data is someone else's job, and they start doing their governance or risk management you know after the data, right? And that's that's challenging to do with machine learning, right? Whereas I imagine with a team like yours with your perspective where data is part of your purview and part of the key focus, that also enables you to take a more expansive view of, of, of you know, governance and model risk management as well. Yep, yep. definitely agreed. Uh, data is the key. It is a key component of uh, model risk management. So improving the data processes and getting the data patterns right and uh, you know, um, providing the right access to the right people who are building the models, who are able to connect the model errors back to the input data and fix those errors are definitely uh, key parts of the process in ensuring really well managed model risk management. Yeah, that's no, that's awesome. And again, that's some of that's even you know it's just challenging for even organizational reasons, right? When when your when your team at your organization is structured where the people who own the data and work with the data are just miles away organizationally from the people who build the models. Doing that tracing is tough for even organizational reasons, not just technical ones. So seeing that it's all kind of under a tighter roof with with the way that you approach things, uh, I think that's you know you have to have that to be able to do it right. And it's 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 uh, it's exciting to see that you you've built it from the ground up that way. Um, okay, so you you know can't get through an interview in this in this town uh, on this topic without some mention of large language models and uh, and ChatGPT. So I gotta I gotta ask the perfunctory question on that. You know, how are you thinking of staying, you know, kind of current with the latest advancements around, you know, large language or foundation models? More importantly, you know, kind of what what role do you see these? I think this is what everyone's talking about. There's this immense yeah. excitement from the top all the way down. But what role, you know, both near and longer term, do you do you see these technologies playing in the in the in the financial services industry? Yeah. Yeah, very interesting question, Alex. I'm going to take a step back and answer that question from a wider lens of emerging technologies in AI and ML, because there are other topics that are also really exciting that's happening right now. And I'd say that as Capital One, we're always exploring a wide range of emerging technologies. But with any emerging technology, we have to weigh the potential benefits against risks and practicality. Most importantly, with everything that we do, including the technology that we're building, uh, we need to ensure that it is benefiting our customers and associates at the end of the day. But having said that, we're doing a lot of interesting work in emerging areas that are relevant to us and financial services. I'll give you a few example topics that are uh, really important to us. Explainable AI is one topic which we talked a little bit about. This is really important because uh, it gives us the ability to create transparency and ensure fairness through explaining ML models. So in, we're, we're invested in that area. Graph ML is another topic that is really important to us, specifically to identify fraud. Anomaly detection is a critical topic. And we try to stay at the forefront when it comes to anomaly detection, where we, uh, which we use to identify changes in data to protect customers and adapt to fluctuating environments. Natural language processing, uh, which uh, large language models is, uh, is an extension of, is critical for us. We use that in quite a bit of use cases. One example to it is teaching intelligent assistants to understand and generate natural language uh, outputs. Privacy and data related technologies are critical. Uh, we use those to develop models and techniques for protecting sensitive customer data and uh, recommender systems. I'll give one more example, um, which is one of our bread and butters at Capital One. We use recommender systems to personalize the experience of our customers. So we need to ensure that we're at the cutting edge of what's happening in that field as well. And, you know, we don't do this do, uh, do our research in isolation. We have research partnerships with leading universities and research institutions to advance the application of the types of techniques we just talked about. But also we utilize these partnerships to build destinations for technology talent. The final point I'll make is 
advancements in AI and ML, the kind of advancements that you talked about, large language models, foundation models, will impact financial services in three big ways, in my opinion. First, they'll enable us to better manage our ML portfolio. So giving us ways to standardize, create transparency, and add resiliency to our models. Second, they will make our models better. We see advancements both on the model side, such as transformer-based deep learning architectures, and on the data side, for example, standardization of data or automated labeling or programmatic labeling. And improvements in both of these areas will result in AI systems that are more accurate and simply more responsive. And third, AI and ML advancements will pave the way for new use cases. These new use cases will result in new tools that empower our associates and our customers. I believe the future of ML is really exciting. And frankly, I'm really happy to be building it in a place like Capital One. I couldn't agree more. It, it is extremely exciting. And you know the way that you're doing it there is, is also extremely exciting. And it uh, it captures I think a, a lot of uh, you know a lot of where the excitement is around you know everything from from the data to the the interpretation and and tracing back and 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 you know, that the entire full package that expansive view that lets you actually actually get the success and 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 uh, um, I guess with that I'll I'll I'll, uh, I'll just thank you for taking the time to to chat with us and share some of your perspectives and your journey today and uh, looking forward to to catching up soon. Thanks for taking. Thank I appreciate you and I thank you for having me.